Hi, Adam Drake here, and today we're going to talk about engine tuning and specifically engine tuning at higher altitudes. So I've been asked this question a few times recently. People have emailed me saying that they're going to events in Colorado or just different places where the altitude's a little bit higher and they're a little bit concerned, wanting to know what they may need to kind of look for or what they may need to adjust on their engine for those conditions. So some things to consider with higher altitude, you're always gonna have considerably less power because there's less oxygen in the air. You're also gonna have a bit narrower tuning window. And I kinda wanna go over and give you a, a few tips on things that you can maybe adjust for those conditions to help make sure that your engine runs strong and has similar power characteristics to where if you're closer to sea level. Another thing to consider at higher altitudes, your engine with your base settings from like closer to sea level, the engine's gonna be a little bit rich, but typically at a higher altitude, you wanna be a little bit more conservative because again, there's less oxygen in the air, it's a little bit harder for the engine to breathe. The first thing, uh, if it's available to you, you could always run a bit uh, higher nitro content. So in the US, we run 30% pretty much all the time. Some guys run 25, but most people run 30. If you have access to 40% nitro, you could run higher nitro content. And with that, in most cases, you could keep the rest of your engine setup or your package the same. If you don't have access to a higher nitro content fuel, you could go to a larger Venturi. So again, there's less oxygen in the air. So if you're able to run a bigger Venturi, it's gonna allow more air, it's gonna broaden the tuning window and overall give the engine a little bit more power. Another thing that you could do, I kind of wanna give a little caution to this just because um, it's not something that I recommend unless it's you're really struggling for power and especially if if uh, it's gonna make it or increase the low end power mainly, would be to remove a head shim. So like stock with the 82 engine, it comes with one silver and two copper head shims. You could remove one of the copper head shims. It's gonna just give it more compression, more power, and just you gotta make sure when you go back to uh, your normal track or closer to sea level, to add that shim back to the engine. If you're using like a Spec 2 or 2101, they only have two head shims, one aluminum, one copper. Again, you would wanna remove the smaller of the two, which is the copper head shim. And then another thing would be to maybe adjust your clutch a little bit. So again, the main thing you're gonna feel at the higher altitude is the engine's gonna feel a little bit more sluggish uh, so you may want to go to a little bit more aggressive clutch setup, maybe a little bit stiffer clutch springs. But it's all going to depend on the track conditions and how much of a difference there is in elevation. So for us, like racing at Revelation, I, I could be off a little bit with these numbers, but I believe Revelation's like maybe six to 800 feet above sea level. So it's really easy to produce power. You can run a smaller Venturi and still have good power. Um, but then we go to like Thunder Alley where it's 24 to 2600 uh, feet elevation. So there, typically you'll wanna run a little bit bigger Venturi, but it's not enough of a difference to where you need to remove a head shim or run a higher nitro content. I would say when you would want to maybe start playing with the nitro would be maybe above four to five thousand feet so an example was the 2010 nationals in colorado i believe we we're at 6200 feet so i actually ran 50 percent nitro in truck and 40 in buggy and with that setup again i was able to keep everything else the same i still ran my normal venturi normal clutch everything else i just put more nitro and it gave me similar power characteristics uh, to when I was at sea level. 
or closer to sea level, not that we race at sea level all the time. So again, those are just a few things to kind of look for. The, the easiest thing though would be to run a much bigger Venturi. Typically in buggy, I run a six or a 6.5 but if you're at a really high elevation and again you want to broaden the tuning window give more overall power just throw an eight in it i sometimes will run like an eight millimeter if i'm at um, dialed in or it's now called socal nitro raceway also there's another track near there where uh, they've hosted the atalano grand prix it's a really big track has really big jumps so instead of going like a half a millimeter bigger and kind of creeping um, up on the Venturi size. I'll just go straight to an eight and then in truck maybe to a nine. And then if I have like too much power or I want to kind of fine tune for my runtime, then I'll kind of creep my way back down with the Venturi. Um, but I, fe I feel that it's best to make a pretty big jump initially if you're down on power. There's sometimes when I go the SoCal Nitro, and depending on the layout, if the track's really flowing and not a lot of jumps out of corners, I'll still stay with my 6.5 Venturi. But if it's hot, there's jumps right out of corners, and I feel like I need more power, my first thing would be bigger Venturi. Next would be head shim. Again, that's if you don't have access to run a higher Nitro content.